Okay, I'm just going to have to use this image because uh, I can't find a higher resolution. So once I have this image inside of Photoshop, what I can do is I can use the crop tool. And by using the crop tool, I can get rid of most of the things I don't want in this picture just so I can focus in on him. And so in this case, the crop tool, it looks like two lines going like this. It's one, two, three, four, f fifth one down. And if you draw a box over what you want, uh-oh, I have a constrained. I'm going to hit escape here to stop it again. There's a constrained option here. I'm going to clear that before I do it. Okay, this time I'm going to use the crop tool. I'm going to clear any settings somebody had previously. And then I'm going to draw a box around what I want. And so I'm going to have a little portrait of him on my piece. And I probably won't use the whole thing. I'll just use part of it. And I'm going to hit return on the keyboard. And so by getting rid of what you don't need, it will help you in Illustrator because we're going to convert this bitmap image into a vector image inside of Illustrator. And if and if I didn't need like his feet and his cane and stuff, get rid of that will save you a lot of time and effort inside of Illustrator. So if you want inside of Photoshop, there is a crop tool that you can use. Then I'm going to save as a JPEG. Call it ready. Highest quality JPEG I can make. Then I'll be able to bring that JPEG right into Illustrator. So let's get started in Illustrator. So in this case, again, we're working on the midterm project. I'm going to turn this off here. Let me close it down. OK, so in this case, this, this project is going to be uh, a project that should, should take you some time. It's going to take me some time to go over it with you. Uh, again, what I want you to do is think about an artist that you would like to reproduce a poster for. And in this case, uh, uh, gather all your material first, uh, find some pictures, scan some pictures, um, take some photographs, write some text, and then we can get started in Illustrator. In this case, I'm going to start inside of Illustrator by going under File, New. Now, we really haven't talked too much about color in this class. Um, we've pretty much been just starting and drawing and practicing drawing. but. When you start inside of Illustrator and with a new document by going under File, New, some of the things that we'll look at later on in the semester might be the number of artboards, which might be different pages. You can think of an artboard as almost a page, but it doesn't have to be a page, but it could be almost like a page. Uh, the other thing that we tend to do is just start from default, but in this case, we're going to look at size. This, this time, when we're looking at size, you can see that it says letter here, which is the standard 8.5 by 11, which uh, in this case, I want you to do a little bit larger because it's a poster. So, you know, usually posters are a little bit larger. So, if we look under size here, I can click on that and change the size. If you knew, use the legal size right here, and right now it's saying points, and you're like, I have no idea what a point is. Well, if you don't understand the actual measuring system that they're using here, you can change where it says points over here, and you can use inches. And you'll notice that the legal size is 14 by 8.5 by 11. And there is a tabloid size next, which would be 17 by 11. So try and use like 17 by 11 or 11 by 14, something a little bit larger than 8.5 by 11 for this project. I know that's, you know, we're really just doing this online and you're really not printing it out. Maybe we'll print it out for like the final or something, but think about using a little bit larger size so you have more space to work as well as something that would look bigger. The next thing you'll notice is you have the orientation. You have a portrait mode, which would be long and skinny this way, or a landscape mode, which would be, of course, 17 inches wide by 11 height in this case. So I'm going to use the tabloid. I change mine to inches. Under the advanced option, if you click there, it'll allow you to change the color mode. Now, up to now, we haven't really talked about color mode, but really there's only two color modes inside of Illustrator. You have the RGB and the CMYK. The RGB means red, green, and blue, and that's sort of what we do when we are, we're making graphics for web pages or video and things like that. I tend to use the RGB. But if I'm going to print things out with a color printer or send it to somewhere where they're going to use a color printing, I tend to use the CMYK because that's what most color printers use. If you have a photo color printer at home or any kind of color printer, usually you have a, you know, a cyan, magenta, and yellow, and black color inside of the printer so that's sort of why we start with print we use CMYK and for web or, or video and things like that I use RGB but in this case since I'm gonna think about this as being a printed piece I'm going to use CMYK don't worry about it you can put it on your web page and it'll look just fine next uh, uh, is a 300 ppi 
uh, preview mode default, align new objects to pixel grid. I don't know what that means, but uh, let's just keep it there. So these are kind of the settings I'm going to use. Again, it's a little bit bigger than the standard size that you see here, than the, the 11 by uh, uh, eight and a half by 11, and then, and then I hit OK. And oh, I already made a mistake. I wanted it to be in the in the, in the portrait mode. So let me start over real one more time. I'm going to change it here to the this way. So it's tall and skinny, not wide. You can do either way. There we go. So here we go with our document. The first things that we're going to talk about before we get started would be kind of setting up our document a little bit more. One of the things you'll notice is that we changed it to inches inside of, of, of Illustrator when we started with our new file. And if I wanted to see rulers and what rulers would be would be a way of measuring on the screen. We're going to use rulers and grids in this project. And what rulers are is a way of measuring on the screen. So if you go under view, you'll notice there's one that says rulers towards the middle. And if you say show rulers, you'll notice it brings up some inches that go along the top and inches that go along the bottom. Notice how it says zero, zero in the upper left corner. Zero. 0 is the upper left corner. You can adjust that, but I tend to leave it like it is right there, just so that everything's measured from the upper left corner. Whenever we're talking about computer graphics or anything in Photoshop or in on web pages, when I'm, I'm doing things in Dreamweaver, the upper left corner is always 0, 0, and Flash, everything in the upper left corner is 0, 0. So just, you know, it's normal for it to be 0, 0 up there. So knowing the inches here will help us line things up and 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 make things work so again that was under view rulers show rulers and it'll pop up now there is a grid you can put on I tend not to use grids because they get in my way when I'm visually putting things on we're gonna use something called guides to help line things up as well as there's an alignment feature inside of, uh, of, of Illustrator that we'll be using to help line things up also now in this in this case we're going to be using a lot of scanned in uh, images as well as text that we copy and paste and things like that. So in this project we're going to have a lot more layers than just one layer. Up to now we kind of you know in in the fruit you might have done a couple layers, but um, for now uh, we're going to mostly use uh, a lot of different layers. So the first thing I'm going to do is is kind of start with uh, my scan and just start working with that that scan that I portrait that I. I did in, in, in Photoshop and to bring a bitmap image into Illustrator I go under file place file place a lot of applications when you bring things in you go under file import but there is not really an import you use file place inside of Illustrator to bring things in so I'm gonna go under file place and I'm going to go to my Toulouse Electric folder and I think I made a photo called photo ready and if I hit place it'll bring my picture in and it places it in the middle of your document. Here it is. Now it's kind of small because, uh, like I said, the resolution wasn't very high and it was just a downfall and I could not find one, but I like the image that I have here. And so um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna convert this image into a vector and then I'm gonna blow it up a little bit to be part of the graphic element of my, um, my design here. So let me just make it a little bit bigger. Again, a photo is kind of like inside of, uh, of, of, of Illustrator, any object, you can make it bigger or smaller. The downfall is you're really not making it any better quality. You're really just blowing up the pixels that are inside it. So it's not really going to make the image any sort of higher resolution or anything like that. It's just scaling it and, and making it probably even worse. But I just wanted to make it a little bigger so you can see it. And so we can zoom in again. The Control Plus will allow you to zoom in. The, this hand on the space bar will give you a hand. So my first uh, uh, project for this assignment will be to, to do something called Live Trace. I use Live Trace a lot to, to um, uh, convert objects and uh, convert bitmaps into vectors and then I use those vectors as a uh, graphical element within my layout. The Live Trace has several different um, features. There's a pre-made one up here as you have a bitmap image selected you'll notice at the top there you'll see a couple things one's called embed we'll learn about that in a little bit edit original which will probably open it in Photoshop and let you um, alter it a little bit 
live trace is what I'm talking about right now, and a mask is where you would cover up certain areas, and we'll learn about that in a little bit later. But these are the options, and, and the first option that I want to talk about is the live trace. And if there is a live trace, there's a pull down menu next to it, and there's some simple things. You got a simple trace, and if you click on that, you'll see what it does. What it does is it converts the images that you see there into a uh, vector, okay? And so this is now a vector piece, okay? I'm going to undo that. And so that was the first one. It's kind of default. And then they have a six color one, which will give you a little bit more. The downfall of that is that it starts, you start getting all kinds of different colors in there. I'm going to do that. Um, another way of going about it is there's colors, there's low fidelity, high fidelity, grayscale, hand drawn. All these do different things in sort of what this default setting under Live Trace when you have a vector or a bitmap image selected here in Illustrator. Each one of these kind of what they're what what the words are meaning is what you're starting with. So if you're starting with a hand drawn sketch, that's kind of what they're saying to you. Oh, why don't you use the hand drawn sketch? Or you're starting with a detail illustration. Oh once you choose this one or in this case this is a kind of a, a low fidelity photo low fidelity here and you'll see it gives you kind of that look and it's kind of blurry so that's not very nice but if you don't want to use any defaults you should really learn about the the, the settings and, and there's a list of the chapter in the book that, that you can go over about all the different settings in this case if you want to go over some of the settings they're located under object live trace and inside there you'll see there's one that says tracing options tracing options and if you click on that you can there's a whole bunch of different ways of doing live trace now since I'm just working with a black and white photo I'm going to use a black and white mode but there is a color mode if you want to use color and what it does is it kind of does what the, this whole technique of what we call posterize which means is it sort of converts the image into flat solid areas of color when you're using a black and white option, since I'm using black and white here, I'm not going to use color, you'll notice there's a threshold option. Okay, Black and white means it's only going to convert it to wherever there's a, a color, it'll be black, and wherever it's dark, it'll be black, and wherever it's light, it'll be white. The threshold is sort of a cutoff area. It means if it's 50% gray or more, it's going to be white. 50% gray or less, it'll be black. That's what the, the it, it has a scale of 120 or 256, so 128 is right in the middle there. So if I hit the preview, you can see what it looks like. Again, if I adjust my threshold here down, you'll see I get less because it's taking the gray ones and making them white. If I go up higher, you'll get I'll get more. So there's like a, a sort of a scale here that allows you to 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 adjust the way if you wanted to go to black and white. Next, there is an actual gray scale option that allows you to choose multiple colors of gray so that it's just not pure black and white. You can actually have more shades of gray in there. And you'll notice as I do that, it starts adding more data into my image. The downfall of doing that is it gets kind of rough along the edges and not as smooth. Uh, if you want to smooth out the edges, there's some options over here for the contour and angle. And I kind of go over these, these options a lot more in a different lesson than this one right now. But I just wanted to introduce it to you here so that you can start trying it. But by changing the minimum area and the curving over here will allow you to make smoother edges to your object, as you can see as I adjusted here. You can see the options are adjusting here. Okay, that's the minimum area thing over here. So it's not totally, you know, it has to be kind of crazy like that. Um, and then there's a color option. If I had a color image, you could choose that and then choose the amount of colors you want to use, and you might want to try that. There's a whole bunch of reading in the book about it, and like I said, I'll go a little bit more over it in another lesson. But for this for this example today, I'm just going to go with the black and white mode and I'm going to turn my threshold up just a little bit. I want to get kind of like some some features to his face, but not too much. I want it to look like Toulouse Lautrec, but uh, not too detailed. So I'm going to go kind of like that, and then I'm going to hit trace. Okay, so what it does is it'll convert that bitmap image into a vector image. And if I go to my layers window and I look and see what happens here, you'll notice there is a trace and that's what's left there. It's an object, okay? It's an object over here in the layers window of his face. Now, if I wanted to alter it and things, well, let me pause this video and when we come back, I'll talk about altering it.